I saw this video the other day about not losing your voice, like your voice and all this algorithm stuff. Take that, Google. I won't even conform to your aspect ratio guidelines. So, I have a strong suspicion the massive crankcase volume of my engine design is what's causing it not to rev and they're just the slightest bit of load. There are multiple possible workarounds though. Yes, one of them is just decreasing the crankcase volume. I kind of don't want to go there yet. Kind of part of my vision here. Might have to though. But first, a little bit of explaining is probably a wise idea. This is a two-stroke engine in its simplest form. Without a pipe and expansion chamber, this is pretty much a piston pump. There's a volume down here, that's the crankcase. The crankcase volume is connected to the intake via, in this case, a reed valve. And there's a volume up here. That's the combustion chamber. This piston increases and decreases these two volumes. When it's moving down, it's making the crankcase volume smaller. When it's moving up, it's making the combustion chamber volume smaller. The crankcase volume is connected to the combustion chamber volume via these transfer ports. They go from the crankcase through here, enters above the piston in here. I'll show you with a fancy drawing. By the way, I'm guest in the newest Motorcyklepodden podcast. That's in Norwegian. Link in description. Check that out. When the piston is moving down, it compresses what's in here. When the transfer ports are uncovered, it forces that mixture up here. When the piston is moving up, it closes this ports, the exhaust port and transfer ports, and compresses the mixture up here. Basically just pumping mixture from here to here, from the crankcase to the combustion chamber. This is overly simplified, but without the pipe, just this system, you benefit from a small crankcase volume, as long as it's larger than the combustion chamber volume. When the piston is moving down, you create higher pressure differential, potential for moving more mixture from the crankcase to the combustion chamber. More mixture, more power. Quite a different story with a pipe though. You can see it has this distinct shape. So this is connected to the exhaust. It's an exhaust pipe. In a two-stroke, there's so much more to this pipe than just evacuating the exhaust gas. There's pulses moving up and down this pipe, moving mixture in and out of the cylinder. It achieves the same goal as the piston, just does it much better. That poor piston just lost a big part of its job. In the power band, that pipe is sucking much harder on the crankcase than what the piston can do with its weak pumping. With the piston, you benefit from a small crankcase volume, create higher pressure and you can move the mixture faster into the combustion chamber. Problem with this though, the small volume quickly loses its high pressure. Enter big crankcase volume. With the pipe sucking harder and for a longer period of time, we benefit from a big crankcase volume. We don't care about the piston not being able to pump that chamber effectively anymore because it's the pipe doing the job. With this high volume you get a lower pressure differential at the beginning of the transfer cycle but as the volume is much bigger you get a higher transfer overall. The pressure drop from transfer open to transfer close is smaller. This chamber loses much less of its volume versus the small chamber. People don't usually take it to the extent of extreme I've done here though in the PIP engine. You typically compromise so the piston can still do some part of the job. I'll try to show you what I think is causing my problems here. Let's pretend this is that two-stroke pipe connected to the cylinder here. Water is the exhaust gas. The waves in the water are the pressure waves in that exhaust pipe. Now as you start revving up the engine, waves start moving. This pipe is a fixed length. It takes a certain amount of time for a wave to travel from this end to this end and back. These pulses, when moving away from the cylinder, pulls mixture from the crankcase into the combustion chamber and also exhaust gas out of the cylinder. When the pulses are moving back towards the cylinder, they push fresh mixture that has been sucked out into the exhaust duct back into the cylinder and block charge from escaping, effectively supercharging the cylinder. Problem though is with this fixed length, this only works properly at a narrow RPM range, and that's the reason for the peaky nature of two strokes. Resonance. You can see if I start moving the bottle 
at the right pace, that wave starts increasing in uh, amplitude. Now say this resonance thing happens at 20,000 RPM. There will be a point, say about halfway there, this wave starts moving when the exhaust port opens and it arrives back a little bit before it closes. This means the wave is sucking at its hardest when the piston is at bottom dead center, effectively moving mixture from the crankcase to the combustion chamber, into the cylinder. About halfway there though, that's not what's happening. The engine cycle is moving far too slow for the length of this pipe. The wave starts moving when the exhaust port opens and arrives back at bottom dead center, effectively pushing mixture from the cylinder into the crankcase, the opposite of what we need. That's why my engine can't rev under any kind of load. I'm left with a feeling this didn't help much. I made you more confused, hopefully not. Things to do to work around this issue. Before trying anything else, let's see if it will rev up without the chain connected. There is some run out in this pulley that could have caused the problem, like it was dragging more than, more than it was supposed to. Benefits of an upside down engine with an upside down pipe. I'm used to dealing with an upside down engine. An upside down pipe though, that makes things quite a bit worse. In terms of burnt oil ending up in the plug. While waiting for the engine coolant to get up to temperature, let's discuss some options if this doesn't work. Option number one, softer reeds. It takes no rocket scientist to see that big crankcase volume, low crankcase compression, does not go well with reed valves. Using a reed valve on the primary intake just because it's so convenient. If it was the only intake, I would have used a rotary valve. Rotary valves don't care that much about crankcase compression. No pressure differential needed for a rotary valve to open. Softer reeds could help. They'll easily get damaged from backfires though. Advancing ignition timing in the problem area could help. This is a fixed timing ignition though. It has a fixed curve. I'll have to have a look at that curve first though and see how bad the timing will end up in the power band if I start increasing it down in the in the problem area. I could replace this ignition with an Ignitec unit though, like the one I'm running on the brute force engine, fully programmable. It has a bunch of features built in which could let me control the variator, meant to be electronically controlled, maybe some nitromethane injection, stuff like that. 17.4 degrees, that's more than enough for the coolant. Let's start the engine and see how it behaves now without the chain connected. There's kind of promising results. It is acting a bit lean. Let's uh, up the main jet size and see if that helps. 115. Let's give it a little more ignition timing. More ignition timing seemed to help there. I have a slight problem here. I'm not sure, not 100% sure what the timing was set at before and what it's set at now though. This is the manual for that ignition unit. It shows a curve here, so that's the curve. Starts off at about seven degrees, quickly jumps to 14, then starts descending. 
I've set the ignition per the instructions here, the red mark, that is the ignition moment, it says, indicates the ignition moment. And I remember setting that to start at something like 25 degrees or something. I'm pretty confident that's this point, 19,000. We would see about 13. These numbers seem sensible to me. What scares me now is that if I bring in enough ignition advance down here to have it rev up, there will be too much here. When the power band kicks in, it starts detonating. That's what I'm fearing. We gotta try with the roller connected though. Regardless. Okay. This will work. This won't though. We'll need to... That clutch at its stiffest setting is still grabbing too early. There's room for much higher reduction though. So what I think I should do here, add another jack shaft, a second reduction. I think I've even got pulleys for it. We've got a plan now. I'm afraid this is as far as we'll go this week though. There's a funeral tomorrow and the stuff that goes with that funeral. And I have to work an extra day in the kindergarten to cover for someone else. So, uh, next time. See you next time. Thanks for watching.